Bill, give me a thumbs up. All right. We're going to pick up where we left off last time. And last time, if you remember, we were creating a template. And we're going to use that template then to create all the pages of our site. Now the idea is, is that we put all the common HTML code in one file. By common HTML code, I mean the code that I am going to have on every page. It's a good idea to have a certain amount of your site consistent from page to page to page. Consistent header to let people know, hey, they're on the same site. They're not, they didn't magically hop to some other site. A consistent footer for the same reason. And a consistent navigation because that really helps the user in finding what it is that they're looking for. Um, if you call things the same thing on every page, if the links are in the same position, then um, that, that really can be beneficial um, in, in helping user find their way around. So here's where we left off last time. We had this. I had a template and I had a style CSS file. One thing to note, I, I occasionally get questions where people saying about like if they upload their program or, or, or pages and then download it again, that stuff doesn't work. Remember, if you are in a zip file, this actually, this zip folder, and you can see the little zipper icon there, indicates that all your files are compressed into one file. So if I go and try to open the template, I don't get the CSS and you won't get the images and all that because those files aren't actually there. Those files are all combined into one compressed file. So how do you know if you're in a zip file? Well, there'll be something to indicate extract all files. That means that I'm opening up from within the zip file and therefore it's not going to work as expected. And if you notice also you see the little zipper icon up there. Whereas after I've expanded it, in fact, let me go and expand it now to review that. After I've extracted it, I can pick the folder and extract it. Notice we don't have the little zipper icon on the folder. And if we open it up, we don't have it. And now when I double click on it, I get the CSS and I would get the images and so on. All right. Our goal here, we've created this template and Let's say I'm reasonably happy with the way that the HTML is. Not necessarily the CSS, because that's isolated in its own file. But before I start cloning the template, I want to make sure that the common portions of this site, the common portions of this page, that which every page is going to share, I'm OK with. And I'll look at it, and for the sake of argument, yeah, I'm okay with it. There's something I would, am, am planning on putting on it. I'd do it now before I've started cloning it. All right, but let's say I'm okay with this, the basic HTML of this page. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to go and I'm going to make copies of this. Let me show file extensions first of all. All right. And I'm going to go and I'm going to make a copy. Now if we look at our navigation, we can see what I call my pages in the navigation, index, classical, skate, and places. So when I make my copies, I'm going to use those names because that's what the links are set up for. So I'm going to right mouse and copy this, and I'm going to make four copies of it. Paste, 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 paste. Actually, I probably could get away with just making three copies, right? Because I could just rename the template to index and use that as a home page. Then I'm going to go and I can get rid of the template or I can put it aside or whatever, keep it as a backup maybe. And I can go in and I can rename these guys to be each of the pages that I had. Index. Places. 
classical and skate. All right. And now I should have all four of my pages. Now they all look identical. All right. And what my job will be now will be to go and to make this content area different on each page, right? I'll put the stuff on, on each of those pages to make it serve the purpose for which it was intended. All right? So in other words, to make a four pages about a topic doesn't take four times as long as to make one page, right? You spend your time getting the template correct, you clone the template, and then you just change the one section of it. And most of, or much of the hard work of, of HTML is in creating that template to start with and getting the template to be what you like. Now again, in this case, I'm using a very simple template. You could, you could certainly go beyond this and, and what we're going to do over the next few classes is talk about what we can do CSS-wise to maybe, um, you know, make it a little more elaborate. Keeping in mind that simplicity is a, is a good quality for web pages to have. All right. Questions about this process? I'm not too concerned about having the CSS perfect. Why not? Because if I go and change something, I can change it in the CSS. And every page will get that change. So, for example, let me open it up in Chrome to show you something. There we go. There's it in Chrome. And I go from page to page. I'm not too concerned about getting the CSS exactly correct right now because I can change it at the drop of a hat. So for example, if I want this to be narrower, I can simply go in and change where it says 60% to 80%. And because my CSS is in its own file, every page gets that change because the change is made to the CSS and the CSS is in its own file and all the pages share that. Now, you may notice something that I did not notice at first, all right? And that is it looks different in Internet Explorer than it does in Chrome. Why is that? HTML5, exactly. In other words, I forgot to put in the HTML5 shiv. And I can download it if I want. And then I can go and copy it there, and I can put the code in. Now, this is something, if I was smart, I would have done this before I cloned those four pages. Because now I've got to go into four pages and make this change. Can't say that I did this on purpose, but it's a good illustration of why you aim to make sure 
that you have everything in your HTML correct before you go cloning it. So I'm going to put it in there. Um, um, you can do it either way. And, and, and you can download the file so it's actually on your server or you can use their link which hot links to it. That's one case where hot linking, in other words pointing to someone else's site is okay because they've effectively given you permission to do that. Not everything, but it makes it more HTML5 compatible than it is otherwise. It handles the main new tags, uh, being the um, header, the article, um, the nav, the footer, those tags. So now we should be okay with this. Whoops. Or not. Oh. Notice the code that I put in here. Now is as good a time as any to talk about this. Notice how the code says SRC equals dist slash then HTML shiv. What that is is that's a folder name. And dist is a folder that's underneath whatever my current folder is, wherever the folder that the page is in. So for this to work, I need to create a folder called dist and put that in there. Why do you do this? You do this for the same reason that you create folders on your computer at home, right? Instead of having a million files in one folder, you create subfolders to just to organize your, your site so you can find things quicker. So you can create a folder for your images. You can create a folder for your style sheets. You can create a folder for your JavaScript stuff or any other kind of stuff. And now if we go and view this. It works in IE as well. There also is a script for Firefox, which I forgot to put in, um, which is a CSS file, which I'm not going to do at this point in time. If you remember, it simply sets all the header and, and all those elements to, uh, a bl to be block tags. Um, an earlier version of the lecture has that script, but I could incorporate that as well into these pages. All right, but here we go. Again, the hope is that I've gotten the HTML very close to correct because now if I have to change it, as we saw with that shiv example, I have to do it in four places. Well, what's wrong with doing it in four places? Well, it takes longer to do it. And you're more prone to make mistakes. And if you would have done it earlier, you could have changed it like that if I would have done this before I cloned those things. Now, someone made the point last time, couldn't I just make it in the template and reclone them? And I could have in this particular case because I haven't gone in and made any changes to the individual ones. But if I had gone in and made changes to the individual ones, I'd lose those changes if I went through the cloning process again. So now I can go in and I can create um, pictures uh, or text or whatever on each of these pages to, you know, so that they do their particular job right. Now I will probably won't do all these places but or all these uh, pages but I'll do a couple of them just to get the idea. Um, so for example the home page. Maybe I want a nice picture on the home page. So I will go and I'll do an image search for cross-country skiing. I'm going to go to advanced search 
and I'm going to say that I want a medium-sized picture and I'm going to pick free to use or share. That way I will, I'm less apt to be um, having copyright issues. So I'll do the advanced search and I found this, this, this. I like that one. So, I'm going to go and right mouse there, and I'm going to actually, no, I'm not. Oh, no, 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 come back. There we go, thank you. That's a share link. There we go. So, we'll pick medium sized. I'm going to copy this link so I can put it on there. And I'll put this on my home page. So I'll go into index and I'm going to create an images folder simply because I want to keep my pages organized. So I'll put this image in here. I'm going to rename it so it's not so confusing the name. And I'll call it home because that's going to what I'm going to put on my home page. And I'll go in and edit my home page to include that image. So I'm going to get rid of the Greek text. And I'm going to put in my image tag. Again, I'm showing the full file name, including the extensions. And it's in a folder called Images. So I'm going to say image src equals images slash home dot jpeg. Again, why images slash home dot jpeg? Because my page is in this folder. To get from this folder to the image, I have to first go down to the images folder and then I have the file called home dot jpeg. I give an alt text on it. And there I go. And I can go and view this now. And I get that image. Still kind of big. I'm going to go and make it smaller still. Or actually, I can simply go back to that page and download the smaller one in the interest of time. There we go. That might be a better looking, better size image for this. Yeah. 
then, then you'd have to go and open it up in a photo editor, like the photo, Photoshop or the GIMP or even Microsoft Paint. And then you could go. Again, what you would do is you'd, you'd keep a copy of the bigger image just in case you, want it, you ever want to go back and change the size again. All right, and then you'd make it, through the photo editor, you'd make it the size um, that you want. And, and that's something I would encourage everyone to do. Uh, most, most computers have a simple photo editor on them, and the ones upstairs have the GIMP on, uh, uh, I know, and you can use that. So go and experiment with that and play around with that. Um, just so you get familiar with doing basic things like um, cropping an image or, or sizing an image or, or whatever. All right. It is important to remember that you can make an image smaller without a drop in the quality, but you can't make an image bigger. So that's why I suggest keeping a, uh, the original copy of it. Because then I can always go back and re-edit it to a different size. But if I take and I make an image tiny, and then I decide, no, I want that image to be giant, all right, I'm going to lose quality and it will look pixelated. You know, the blocks you'll see, and uh, instead of straight lines, you'll see jagged edges, and, and it won't look very good at all. All right. I would go then and put some text in. You know, something like, Cross-country skiing is a fun activity when it gets cold. Now I'm going to go put my credit on here. I could put it anywhere for I'll put it in the footer though. My gut feeling is that The format of exactly how you give credit to it is less important than the fact that you give credit somewhere for it, somewhere that's visible. So now I'll go and open this guy up. And we have that as my home page. Notice even on the home page, there's a link to the home page. And I think that's good. There's some people that don't like that, but I think that's good because that allows the navigation to stay consistent as you move from page to page to page. And I have a link to the image source down here. Now, that link Looks awful big down here. I can, I can make that smaller and it's okay, right? Why not? So let's go and let's make it smaller. Go make the links, these links smaller. So I'm going to go in my style sheet file and open it with notepad. And I'm going to go and I'm going to make my links smaller. I'm going to go and say A, font size, that's the attribute that controls how big the font is, and I'm going to say 0.7 M. Now, did we talk about what M means, E-M? Well, if we did or didn't, I'm going to talk about it again, all right? M means emphasis, so 1 M means it's emphasized the normal amount. So that's like the baseline. Anything bigger than 1M means it's emphasized more than 1. So if I did 2M, it's going to be twice as big as it normally would be. Now if I do 0.7M, that means it's going to be 0.7 times or 70% of the normal size. So this will make it somewhat smaller than it normally will be. Yes? 
Yeah, we could, we could, yeah, we could do, and let, let's do, let's do uh, all those things in turn. All right, let's do this one first and then we'll do the other ones. All right, so I'm going to go here and I'm going to save it. And that worked, but it had an unintended side effect. It changed the links here. Ooh. Well, let's, those are navigation links, so those should be big, right? Let's make them big. Ooh, and also made those big. The pro yeah, exactly. The problem is, is the selectors that we've done so far have been all or nothing, right? If I do a selector of header, or nav, or article, or any of these, that does everything on the page that has that tag. So when I create a style rule for A, that does every single link on the page. So what I want to do is I want to refine it a little bit. I want to be able to say, I don't want every link on the page to look this way. I just want certain links on the page to look this way. And that's where we get into selectors. All right. Remember, the first part of a style rule is the selector. That defines what gets that particular style rule. So in this case, if I put an A there, that means every single link on my site is going to look this way. What I want to do is I want to refine it. And if I look at this, if I look at the HTML for a second, What I'll see is, what I really want is these links to look one way and these links to look a different way. So in other words, I want the links in the nav section to look a certain way. I want the links in the footer to look a different way. So what I have is I have a more elaborate selector. So I can say nav. A, footer A. Why couldn't you just put it in there up top Well, that's a good question because <clears throat> because this is for the entire nav section. This is for the entire footer section. This is for the links within the footer section. This is for the nav within, or the links within the nav section. So I want the whole, if I were to put it up here, then it would make every link 80% of the width. And I don't want that, right? I just want instead, I want this to be the whole nav section and this to be the links within the nav section. All right. So let's save this and look at it. Ah, there we got what we want. The links up here look one way, the links down here look another way. So again, we've refined our CSS to have more precise selectors so that we don't have to just say every link on the page looks a certain way. We can say every link within a particular section looks one way and every link within another section looks a different way. Was there a question? Yeah. No, no. Okay. Okay. Now, get back to the question before, if I did it up here, let's remove this and put this in here. Again, that doesn't do the effect because that nav I want up there is for the whole, the whole navigation section. I just want to do something with the links within the navigation section. So now we have finer control of this. It's not an all or nothing thing. We can point to specific things on the page and we can say, hey, this thing I want to treat this way, this other thing I want to treat some other way. Yes. Can 
Yes. That is, again, that is taking it a little bit further still where I can define a link make that link tiny. We'll make this link a little bit smaller than normal. Whoops, I don't want that. I want footer. Now, notice what this says. It says footer.source. Okay? Again, we're, we're drilling down even finer. We're saying in the footer section, and then the source is a little bit different because source isn't an HTML tag, right? What I have to do in this case is I have to go in and assign a class of source to the smaller link, the link that I want smaller. Whenever you see a dot in a style rule, that means give the thing that has this as a class this style rule. So we've now seen three different kinds of selectors. I could alternately, I could do this if I wanted to, dot source. In fact, let's do that. That might be a little less confusing. So let me save this. Let me save this. And let's look at this. So notice that is really tiny. This is a little bit bigger, and these are the biggest. So we're refining it to where we can point to anything on the page and make it look a certain way. So, yeah. Yeah. To do this is two parts. With classes, I define dot and the name of the class name. And that's the style rule that it gets. And then in the HTML, I have to assign that class to, to whoever I want to get that style rule. Yes? The question is the difference between class and ID, because I actually could do something similar to ID, and we'll do that in a second. But that's a great question. The difference between a class and an ID is a class can point to many things on a page, where an ID should only point to one thing on the page. All right? So, for example, source. I could have five different sources. I could have five different images, all of them with different sources. And all of them I would want to have a credit for, right? So, I could create a link and put all five of those links have a class of source because they're all they all mean the same thing. They're all the source of an image. And then they would appear with that style. Whereas something such as um, the banner. Oh, banner's a bad example. Something like this link right here. The link back to the page itself. There's only one of these on the page. So I can assign an ID to it. So an ID means there's only one. A class means there could be multiple. Think of an ID like your ID card your student ID number, right? Your ID, you're the only person that has you, whatever your student ID number is. You, you better be, right? Because otherwise, you'd be getting the wrong person's bill and they'd be getting your grades and, you know, it would be a mess. So with an ID, you have to identify to just one unique thing on the page. Whereas with a class, well, even here in this class, there's more than one student in this class, right? And there can be more than one element, HTML element, in a class. So the last thing we, we, we asked about, and that's a good question, about the ID. So I'm going to put in an ID of current page on index.html. Then I'm going to go on my style page, and I'm going to say pound sign current page. 
Notice the difference. Dot something is the class. Pound sign something is the current page. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the current page a different color. Let's make it pink to really stand out. All right. So now, this is a visual indication to the user that they're on the home page, right? Because the home page link looks different. Maybe pink isn't the best idea for this because it doesn't show up. Maybe I'll put a border around that. So that sort of reinforces to the user that they're on the home page. Then what I can do for the other three pages is I can I put the ID on the other pages. So, on the classical page, I'm going to make classical have an ID of current page. On the places, I'm going to make the places link have the ID of current page. And then finally on the skate page, I'm going to make the skate link. So you see the difference? I could have multiple credits, but there's only one current page in the navigation that I'm on at a time. So by definition, there's only one thing is going to have the ID of current page. So, now as I go through and I navigate through, if I click on that, it gives me a little indication what page I'm on. And that's really useful. Um, because again, we want our navigation to be consistent, but it's still good to give the user a tip off of what page they're on, right? In addition, it would be a good idea to go in and maybe put a title within this article. And then I can make the changes to the other pages in turn. So there's I had that in notepad twice, so I overwrote my earlier changes. Now, we might want to get rid of the, the underline in this, because that's kind of awkward. All right? How do I do that? Well, I can say nav a text decoration none. It should be pretty obvious based on the position on the page that that is my navigation, right? If not, I could do some other things to it to make it stand out, like maybe give it a different background color or whatever. But now that I'm putting a box around the current page, it was kind of awkward to have the underline there too. Now, did you have a question a second ago? Yeah. I know it was too much to edit today, but I was wondering if we're going to learn that. We will actually start in that direction today. We, we won't get all the way there, but, but we can start uh, on that direction today. All right? Now, I wanted to stop for a second and rewind and talk about the different selectors that we've learned for CSS so far. The basic one we learned is, the first one we learned was where we put an HTML tag here. 
And then we have our style rule there. So the style rule, you know, that's going to be the same. The, the structure of a style rule, that is the stuff between the two curly brackets, is the same for everything. We, we put the attribute, colon, value, semicolon. But the selector can be an HTML tag. It can be take two. It can be something like this. Well, we're not specifying every HTML tag, oh, I'm sorry, every H1 tag, but just the H1 tags in the article section. So we have our basic HTML tag. We have tags nested within other tags. We then have classes and IDs. So we've seen four different ways to do the selector. We can even take it further. We can mix and match. So for example, I could say footer dot source. And that would mean everything that has a class of source that's within the footer. So that way I could make sources in the footer look one way and sources in the body of the page and the article of the page look a different way. Now this can be kind of complicated and this is why creating a style sheet requires a little bit of forethought. All right. So you can define some basic rules for everything on the page and then you can go in and be more specific for certain exceptions on the page. So I can make all the links look one way whereas I can make the other links to look, um, you know, the exceptional links look a little bit different. All right. Let us look now at styling these navigation links a little bit more, a little bit better. That's where you use an ID to define a style rule. So for example, here, pound sign current page, that means the thing that has an ID of current page. So in this case, that has an ID of current page. Let's look at styling these links a little bit more. And eventually we'll sort of evolve into maybe getting a tab-like look to them. But we'll, first things first. All right. So I'm going to focus on this style rule here. And I can start out by giving it a different color. Let's give it this as a color. And let's give it a background of gray. All right, so those are our four links now. No, except both the British and the American spelling of gray, by the way. I don't know, at a young age, I, I saw the version of gray spelled with an E, and I've just done it since, so I don't know. So, but if you did gray, G-R-A-Y, it would work as well. All right, now one thing I don't like about this is I don't like how the border is right up against the words. Does anyone recall what we can do to fix that? That's the padding, right. So I can put a padding on here.
I'm going to spread these out. Some people like to do their style rules this way. That way they can see everything all at a glance. You can spell, yeah. America's with an A. Yeah, I, I, maybe, maybe it's not so clear-cut American versus British, but um, you can't spell it with an A or an E. <laughs> Good question. Color with a U. I'm voting no. No, it doesn't. But just to prove the point, gray with an A. That still works. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some padding in here to say padding. And let's make it three pixels. So what padding is, is the space between the border and the text. So there's the border, there's the text. Let's make the padding giant to really prove our point. Let's make it 30px. Whoops. All right, between the border and the text. That might be a little big, but that's actually not bad, right? So I could go and maybe make it 20, let's make it 10px. All right. That's pretty good, especially if we want a tab effect. Well, you want the border thicker. I want the border thicker? Well, I have. Well, remember, the border is, is only there. I'll go and make that, let's say, 5px. There's the border thicker. Remember, the border is only on the current page. Now. We might get closer to being finished than I thought today. Let's do this. Let's say, let's put a style that says, articles, I want to have a background of gray. Oh, I do. Background of white, thank you. Why didn't that work? All right. So there I have that. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to make my links in the navigation have a background of a darker gray. and a color of white. All right. That way you can see which link is active based on the color. Now, I'm going to get rid of this bottom border to make it look more like a tab. So, I'm going to go and say, on the current page, actually I'm going to put this border on all my nav links.
I'm going to go and make the border of the top. left and right B black and I'm going to make the bottom border be gray. Much like when I'm dancing. Okay, so the only thing we need to do to make this look like a tab is push those two together, right? And let's see if I can figure out how to do that. I'm thinking that that will be navigation. I'll just get rid of this padding. Should do it, maybe. They both already have a vertical margin of zero. This will be our cliffhanger for this week, for today. Because you see, if I go and I make this, if I simply go and make this, If I simply bring those two elements together, I am going to have the tab effect. So if you use your imagination for a second, and look at that. If those two are blend together, that's going to look like a tab. This is going to look like it's the inactive tab, because it has a different color and a different look but as I go from there the only thing that's spoiling this scheme is that there's a little tiny gap there and because it's Monday morning I am not seeing where that problem is so we'll leave you in suspense for the next two days I'll give you a reason to come back on Wednesday is is the padding typically when there's a case like that it's a padding or margin or something all right like that and we'll talk about actually troubleshooting this um, because it's important sometimes to see exactly okay what is that missing space and usually what I do is I start putting wild colors on the page just so that I know what it is, right? So I might say article background purple, all right? Then I can see, gee, did that turn purple? If so, then it's part of the article. If not, it must be part of something else. So we'll go in and we'll, we'll figure out um, what that is um, next time, all right? Okay, in North Ridgeville. All right.